welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your tired host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David, also tired, Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to find a vibe and rush it with our tribe. Quickly. <laughs> a quick vibe. So we can go to sleep. Speedy vibes. Speedy gone vibes. I want to ask how you are, but I know how you are. And I feel like that's a triggering question. How am I? Tired. Oh, yeah. I'm a parent of three, so of course I am. How are you, David? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the episode for you all. But it's good to be back. It is. We're back. Second week. Back to back. In a row. Two back weeks. Back to back. Two weeks. It, it was a little shaky whether or not this was going to happen. Was it? It was for me. Oh. I was like 30 minutes away from being like, you know what? Nah. F it. Nah, they got had, one episode out I, of us. I had someone ask when the next episode was coming. So I was like, oh, we got to we got to drop it by Friday. Um, my in, one of my in touch sisters, um, Tia. Oh, she, the one who just subscribed. Shout out to Tia. Yeah, you subscribed. Yay. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, yeah. yeah, she said she's been she, she can't finish the episode because the kids in the car. So she has to listen around them. And I was like, trust me, I understand. Last episode. Yeah. It's not like we cussed or anything. Yeah, but we talked about <clears throat> we were talking about Kiki Palmer's cheeks. Literally called cheeky vibes. And this, so the kids don't need to know that. Look, kids in twenty twenty three know so much more than they're supposed to. Um, but yeah, we were we were chatting about it on Facebook. Um, she was What'd like, she say? "When's the next episode coming out?" And I was like, "Friday." <laughs> so in my head, I was like, "I've already committed Friday to one person." Um, and I want to be true to my what word. What were y'all talking about? About the episode? What was the conversation like? Did she enjoy it? Yeah. I mean, she didn't get to finish it. Did she enjoy what she listened to? Yeah. Any specific parts? My parts. <laughs> Your parts. <laughs> what part, parts? What parts are you talking. Yeah. Are you fishing for? Nobody ever. Nobody ever. I, I keep trying to tell people when they ask, like, what's it like doing the podcast? It's like, people really come for Jessica. I'm just here so she can have somebody to make fun of <laughs> and somebody to put this online. Cause I don't know that she would know how to do it. I would. It just, the quality, like I, I've told people in the past, if I was running the podcast, I would be recording it in an iPhone memo and uploading it from that, from said memo. You are the brains who make like, it would just be audio. It would not be video. Because and the executive producer. Because video, you have to bring it. Yeah. Today, I didn't bring it. Like last, for last first episode back, I gave y'all makeup. I don't even have shoes on. Like I yeah, am. I got the Crocs on. I got and the ankle socks. I got weak old hair. I got ashy toes. <laughs> Make sure they're not in the frame. I I don't have it. I feel like Whitney Houston. Like I have nothing. 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 nothing but ashy toes I got more than ashy toes but I have nothing to give I mean I'm gonna give cause that's my calling <laughs> it's my purpose <laughs> is it my, my, <laughs> this is new my purpose in this this is new is, it's a new calling I haven't heard give, of this before please but, um, please elaborate it's to give to give what I mean it depends on who the receiver is hey <laughs> hey I receive that. Um, Absolutely. Anywho. 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 What do you want to talk about? What's what why are we here? What brought us to the vibe table? The fact that we have a podcast that we re I release mean, weekly. Yeah. Release ahead, weekly. No. Sir, what I don't have is the energy to do this with do you. Do what? This. Because your children have sucked everything out of me. Have they? Between work and your children, I have nothing. Kids haven't been that bad. They, they just, haven't. But it just dawned on me that they're always here. 
Yeah, that's like where they live. They're always around. Yeah, that's where they live. And now that Savi's in daycare, I'm like, this is an opportunity for like us to have moments when no one's home. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's too complicated. But I'm like, maybe Sonoma needs to go somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, we um, could just send send Shay somewhere with Sonoma or Nanny somewhere with Sonoma. We could, we could definitely do but that. But then you still have Silas. Yeah. And she so and it's I, like, look, I didn't expect that a seven year old would test me so badly, <laughs> but this chick is, she just chewed on the straw of my $45 Stanley cup. And it just, so I feel like, I feel like we need to have two conversations. Why do I have a $45? <laughs> and that would be, that would be the first conversation we need to have. And it the was, second, and the second is why. You have this bad habit of letting your kids around and use expensive things. I wasn't letting her use it. I literally brought the cup down because that's my desk cup. So I put and water. And it was on the couch. It. Yeah, it was on the couch because I was on the couch and I moved to the other couch and forgot to move the cup. I gave. I looked up at one point and Sonoma was drinking from it, and I was just like, "Okay, I want her drinking water, so that's fine." And then. I look over and Saul's is, is using it as a chew toy. I'm, you're seven years old. Why are you chewing on this? Like, we have no straws for any water bottles in this house because she's chews on them. Yeah. And I know that's a nervous, t- that's a tick for, like, some people just do that. They just chew, and she's one of those people. But I was like, this ain't even your cup. It's not even your straw. The straw alone is probably like $8. Yeah, I saw how upset you were, so that's why I took Sonoma upstairs to bed because I didn't want to. I didn't want her to be in the. I told, I was like, I think you need to go upstairs. I didn't want her to be in the path of your fury. I, told, I, told, I was like, Salas, so I, I think you need to go upstairs. I I just need a moment. I'm not mad. You're mad. I'm just disappointed. You're mad. And then I had Savi over here. Speak, okay, go ahead. Just talking my head off, and any time I would give her an answer sharply, "Are you mad at me? Do you love me, <laughs> Alec?" I just want to sit here in silence and do my nails. And you keep talking about Yo, at everything. Least, at least she asked you if you still love her. She's just telling me that she doesn't love me. <laughs> like, daddy, I don't love you. She's very concerned. I love mommy. She's in this stage where she's very concerned about how I feel I'm about her. like, dang, I ain't even do nothing. She's always. Be like 50. I'm like, what's she say F me for? <laughs> so, uh, but it's funny. You said I'm uh, not mad, disappointed. You want to tell everybody how we met? Craig and Missy last weekend. Our friends of our follow Oh my gosh. Supporters of the pod. And and Missy yeah. threw me shade because I feel like I'm gonna start a beef. <laughs> and as a um prolific pot steerer, I'm gonna go ahead and say it say it. But last week while we were recording, I had I had picked up my phone, told you Alan was texting me. Ah. She was and, I said, and I said, and I said, he's our most what did I say? Loyal, most loyal viewer. And she got upset. She was like, most loyal viewer. Missy, Missy was, Missy was hurt, and rightfully so. Um, well, number one, number one. She, num- She's literally our consultant. Number one. <laughs> she's like our marketing consultant. Number one. That's my little. That's my big little Didn't brother. She screened the very first episode. I feel like she's. I feel been, like she screened several. Yes, she is legitimately like she screened before we started not actually a, recording. But it's not a competition. She she is everybody everybody. They're, Didn't they're I both. say last season when we get our little podcast award, she gonna be up there with what us? podcast award? You know the podcast award, like the the Emmys before the podcast the podcast What's it called? podcasters anonymous anonymous. <laughs> I mean, I for people know. who podcast too much and yeah, it becomes unhealthy it's, it's, the podcasters uh, award I know that's, my little, that's my little brother that's good for him and they are both our most loyal loyal he, listeners I don't think you can have two most yes, loyal yes you can it's a tie 1A one a, one a and 1A one Alan you know I love you he came by the house the other day I don't know what he brought he brought a shirt for Silas okay because I saw her in a completely different outfit I was like that. I don't know your that outfit or that article of clothing um but yeah he came he was i guess he was chatting with shay and i was in a meeting he hung out for a little bit and i was like is he still here but i mean it's easy to talk to shay like i feel like anybody who comes here to do one thing and shay's here like 30 minutes later they're still talking to her 
But um, no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to give. If, I'll have to rank it. I give. I give Missy one. I give Allen two. But um, and that's why you don't get when he goes to A and T homecoming. That's well, why you don't get shirts. Maybe if he brought me that's shirts. Exactly. No, you don't because get Missy, shirts. Missy has given me a shirt. You don't get shirts. Missy has given me shirts because you don't show love. Missy has looked out. Missy stays looking out. Okay. So I got no beef with Missy. I'm just saying. Yes, you do. I'm saying Missy and I might gonna, have a beef actually because she she was not happy. You're not going. You're not going to disrespect. She was not happy you're with not the fact that I dis- came for Van Lathan. You're not going to disrespect my little brother on the pod. She, I'm not disrespecting anybody. I'm okay. changing the subject. Yeah, she wasn't happy that I I, I came for Van Lathan's voice. I have no other issue with Van. You know. I'm just very sensitive to male voice, to voices in general, but his really just stirs that's me. That's it's, sexist. It's, it's my um, speaking of Van, he's been on Threads, the new social media. Oh, no. So I've been trying to like get him to repost or, or mention me. Hasn't worked yet, but you I'm gonna could, keep at it. You could use me as bait. You could be like Van, my wife. Thinks <laughs> my wife thinks your voice is too nasally. Have your, any thoughts? She loves <laughs> your content. Can't do your voice. Um, I'm sure he's a great gentleman. Um, Man's fantastic, but I—that's just me. I'm very, very sensitive to voices, and I'm—I'm I'm like, do you have a cold? Um, it's disrespectful. But yeah, that's why she and I might be beefing. But other than that, we did. I did. Well, no, you got to meet Missy too. So it's crazy because we've known. It's hard. It's hard to even articulate. It's we've known them for years. You went to college with Craig, um, and you I, shout out to Dub. Shout out. Um, I'm happy I met him too. But I'm sorry. It's like I'm really happy I met Miss. No, you're but not. You're just, like, cord- you just being cordial. You're I not happy you met Craig. Like I didn't care about him. But you didn't. like you there's didn't. like this, okay. this 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 sister man <laughs> that Missy and I have, and I feel like we finally were able to adjust it. But I was telling people it's so interesting that the type of I understand catfishing and all of those things so much more because you can create you can legitimately create a relationship with someone online without meeting them and have things in common, have bonds. And it's this weird conundrum. Like when I finally met her, part of me had to keep reminding myself that this is the first time we've actually met. Like we've done zoom calls. I mean, she's been on the podcast, so I've interacted with her face to face via technology, but I hadn't seen her in person. So I, I remember when we were going out, I picked them up. So she, our, our meeting was in a car, like, Hey, I think I got out and hugged her and then got right back. Cause I was illegally parked. So then we went to the, our, the novelty house, which is where everybody was. And that was kind of the first time I saw her. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's how tall she is. Like, I, I don't know how tall I thought she was, but she's shorter than I thought she was. Um, but it, it's just so interesting. And like we were joking around and telling people like, oh, this is the first time we've met. Like we've known each other, what, seven years, but this is the first time we've met. So that was that was just kind of cool. And it just got me thinking about how you can forge relationships with people and you don't necessarily need to know them in person. And I guess that's how, you know, back in the day, pen pals, like you'd have people, you're sending letters across the mm-hmm. world, across the country, um, cool. back and forth, getting to know people. And you are forging relationships. So you think that you have to know someone flesh to flesh, but you really don't. Like you can have a an entire relationship. Oh, I missed it again. Sorry. Um, an entire relationship with someone and not ever like place your actual eyes on their in-person physique. So um, I was so excited to meet them. I'm plotting to move them here uh, because... I was, I was like, me and Missy can get in some good trouble. Not good for you and Craig, but great for us. But it would be one of those things like, if you don't know where I am, you know that I'm like gonna be with, if, if I'm not with Two Lit Crew, I'm with Missy. And I would probably absorb her into Two Lit Crew. Um, and then vice versa, Craig would be like, where's Missy? You know, she's probably with Jess. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's it. We met and I don't even wanna say we met because like we've known each other, but that met, was fun. Met that in was person. Fun. We met in person. Um, so that was fun. That was cool. Um, they went to, they were in town for a wedding and she had told me she'd never tried jollof rice. So initially I was like, well, I got to get her some jollof what? rice. Um, but then I was like, you know what? You're going to a Nigerian wedding. Go, had try, jollof. go pop your cherry with the Nigerian jollof. 
and then circle back and I'm going to hook it up with some guy in the angel off and you're going to see where it's really at. So, um, I won't give her commentary feedback on the jollof because it might start start some things. I'm not here for that. Um, and I know someone else who was at the wedding who might listen to the podcast, and I don't want it to get back to them because they. Oh, you know somebody else who was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who? Um, you should you you won't remember her, but uh, you should. She came to Solace. Baby <laughs> you always try to be like, oh, you remember? I'm like, no, I don't. She came to. I don't um, remember anybody. Oh, crap! Now her name has escaped me. I got family members. I don't remember. But she came to um Solace's baby shower. She. Oh my gosh! Why is her name escape? I see her face. Oh, Janice. Um, but you won't remember if you see her face, you'd remember her. Um, but not, she not making that face dismissively of her but like i'm not gonna remember yeah uh but she she did she did attend solace's baby shower um so you've met her you've met her more than once because i believe because she was at akachi's wedding um i'm just throwing akachi we went to her wedding oh (laughs) yeah sure wow this Uh, guy um but Hopefully she doesn't listen. <laughs> but I got I got limited space you for do. faces and, and names. It's and it's, a, it's a constant rotation. It's people like start, almost, it's people people cycle in, people cycle out. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. Um, yeah. You haven't seen her since Salas was born because she and her sister came to visit after Salas was born. No, you so remember that's that. Twenty fifteen. Don't remember that. Um. So yeah. So I don't want to give the commentary, and I'm not here to start an international debate on Jalof again because when you know you're superior, you really don't have to go out of your way to, you know, lower yourself to those of uh, the. Yeah, I have. Members. I have. Um, it's not necessary. It's not. <laughs> you don't need to. Even though while I was at the Black <coughs> Bourbon Society event on Tuesday, somehow it came up. We were talking about oxtail and how they're misusing oh oxtail. Like, you know they got um, oxtail sliders. What? They got oxtail sliders. I know they have oxtail pizza sliders, oxtail cheesecake. I mean, cheesesteaks, and it's becoming ridiculous. And for those ridiculously of us, good. No, it's not. Like there are so many other cuts of beef you can use. You you don't need to mess with oxtail. So it started with one. I guess there's this Facebook group which is the most ratchet group I could be in, but I'm in it. And I always say I'm going to leave, but I stay in it. It's called Charlotte. And they're, do you follow them on Instagram? No, but Alan sends me their uh, fight videos from around the city. I heard a thud. So I need you to check one of your kids. Um, Sure. It wasn't a car door closing. It might've been, but the way your kids are set up, it might be one of them too. Um, So Charlotte, and like you have to request to join to see their Facebook content, but they were making a list of all the different restaurants in the city. <laughs> That's not the kid I meant to check, but <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see, but she is knocked out, dead to the world. That child She's is on not. her back. Um, I'm tired of her too. Um, but they were saying that they were accusing him of not using real oxtail, but just using like a stewed beef so that's how the conversation started and i was like you know for those of us who you know aren't of american descent we oxtail is a comfort food it's stewed you know served with rice and beans or rice and peas or whatever it's it's being misused it's already expensive and now people are like oh we're gonna innovate oxtail no we don't have time for that so that's how it started so then this So then it came up, she's in bed, thankfully. So then it came up that I think my, my heritage came up. And so he cornered me and he was like, so what's your opinion of Jalof? So I was like, well, as a Ghanaian, I have to tell you that Ghanaian Jalof is the most superior Jalof in West Africa. I later found out that dude was Liberian. So I was like, okay, I have to retract my statement because I have not had Liberian or Senegalese jollof. So I can't speak on that. But I said, if I have to, Ghanaian jollof is superior to Nigerian jollof. And he was like, he, he, his accent came in and he was like, I mean, I, I was back home. Like we were, <laughs> we had banded together and we were like, it's not even Jalof. Like we were, we were going in and that's not the direction this episode is supposed to go in. But, um, where was I going? Yeah. So we were essentially talking about the misuse of oxtail and how they're putting oxtail on everything. And it's like, no, it's oxtail. 
oxtail needs to be in a stew. It doesn't need to be on a pizza. It doesn't need to be in a cheesesteak. It doesn't need to be in sliders. It doesn't need to be in in egg rolls. It doesn't need to be in anything but a stew that is served with rice. Stop innovating and creating fusions for these already expensive meats. Like the same thing happened when people realized, like recognized goat. And then the prices of goat became so expensive. And then you were getting Australian goat. And like, it's no, it's no. For the, those of us who are ethnic and have these cuts of meat that were not, that were like the discarded cuts of meat that aren't the cuts of meat that everyone want. And now they're making it like, ooh, this is the, the one to eat. No, stop it. They did that with lobster. And now they're doing it with like, it's like they're doing it. Go back to cauliflower, like innovate cauliflower. That's the one you need to innovate. Keep doing cauliflower bread, cauliflower eggs, cauliflower chicken wings so i want to i want to jump I'm in sorry i'm very passionate when it comes to food yeah um i want to jump in really quickly and um you let me go on these tangents and say that, that we need to probably <laughs> push past this this current topic so uh you're the one who praised sliders sliders is a very have good idea had, have you had uh, i won't need to have it to know that it's good to miss you oxtail. Oxtail. oxtail and it's so much work and who are you to, to decide what is an acceptable use of oxtail i am on the council of international diaspora culinary expertise can i is that googleable you can google it i, I don't know google what the results will <laughs> yeah. be yeah the right. seo is gonna bring up something yeah so speaking of bringing up something oh no you gonna bring up some old things um did you ever look into the Jonah Hill stuff? I did. You did? I did. I read the thread. I followed up on a couple of articles. Like I glanced through a couple articles, which really means like I read the first couple sentences of three paragraphs and was like, okay, I get the gist of this. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know how I feel. Mm hmm. Interesting. I don't, I have feelings towards him. I, I still, I never really recognized him as like. So my locks didn't all the way twist. Oh, and they my came, they oh came gosh, undone. I am not Meg. Oh, my knee. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think this one you're going to have to take the lead on, which really means I'm going to let you start talking and then I'm going to interrupt you once my opinion um, formulates. But. One thing that has stood out for the little information I've gathered about this topic is the misuse of like therapeutic terms. Such as? Well, I'm going to take it a different way and just be like how everyone's like trauma triggered. Um, and it's such a delicate subject, mm. but I do think that I agree that these terms can be manipulated. I smacked myself in my own life. I wasn't um, ready for it. These terms can be manipulated to suit the suitor. It's kind of like how people can say, how people say you can back up anything you want from the Bible. Like you can find a scripture that will essentially back up any, any stance in the Bible. Yeah, like slavery. Yes. You know, honor your master, whatever. Mm. Um, so I'm kind of torn. I'm kind of torn because I do think that we are in a time where it's like we need to embrace mental health. We need to, you know, support it. I don't I don't know. I feel like since Jonah Hill's been skinny, he kind of fell off my radar. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. If Wait, that, what? Because he like. So I recently found out before all of this. <laughs> what does this weight have to do with it? No, I mean, he, I feel his like worthiness he was, of being on your I radar. Like so more, you only fat no, actors and actresses no, are on your radar? That's not what I'm saying at <laughs> all. People get skinny all of no, them. No, no, no. I just feel like he lost. Wait. Oh, no. No. <laughs> you are going to get me canceled. And I don't even know that many people. <sighs> I am simply saying. Just, that Jessica's only going to be concerned about you if you. <laughs> If you overweight. Oh my gosh, that's not what you I'm got saying. A little, you got a little budge. He was more like active. In <laughs> <laughs> I'm just digging this hole and I can't get out of it. I just feel like he was oh. he, he was in more things. 
Oh. He was he, like, besides the movie with um, Lauren London, I haven't seen him in anything else. Um, so that's why. That's all I'm saying. But I did find out that I guess The Rock trained him to like lose his weight. Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, do you want The Rock. Um, so that's cool. But. <laughs> But I don't really have any like affinity to him. Like when when you were like this Jonah Hill stuff, I was like, clearly it's not that big a deal because I it hasn't crossed any of my social timelines. But and apparently it went. It was pretty. It was a talked big about deal. on Twitter, but I wasn't oh, there because I'm, I'm, I'm on threading now. Yeah, I'm, so I'm I'm now a substitute. Stop. Stop. No. Okay. Stop. Um, I mean, he seems like he was a little bit of a jerk. I think he kind of contradicts himself because you and a lot of men seem to do this like the thing that attracts you to a woman or part of what attracts you to a woman you don't want them to still live in that Mm. so i mean it kind of ties with like that kiki palmer thing that what's his name Derek jackson um a lot of these men are just like oh you're beautiful i love you you post your body on social media now you're with me put a smock on so that's kind of annoying yeah um because once they do that then you know these same dudes will go out and cheat and it's like oh well she doesn't have what i she used to have she doesn't bring what she used to bring so it's just like catch 22 but i'm gonna toss it on to you all right that's not necessary so a ball don't do that alley oop uh so should i yeah give background or yeah, give some background give some context okay so i think this happened was it over the weekend yeah because you kept Late last week? me with it like i tagged yeah. you in it and i was um, like i don't see it so his joan hill's ex-girlfriend uh sarah brady uh shared some who is she uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Okay, so she's a child of God. Carry on. Uh, she's a, a, from what I know, she's a um, surf, surf instructor. Okay. Surfer and surf instructor. At bare minimum. Speaking of surfing, have you seen that sea otter that is attacking surfers in California and biting their surf? I, I think I heard about it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like America's most wanted so, animal. Okay, you're just going to ignore me. That's no, carry on. no, my thoughts are it's it's prime season for humans to stay out of the water. <laughs> It really is because the sharks things, are coming to the coast. Things are happening, um, and y'all just need to stay on land. That's mine. Mm-hmm. My two cents. If a lot of people don't go, stayed on land, the, we'd be in a lot less trouble. Don't go in some submersibles. That part. Um, don't be on yachts or, or boats. Stay off the islands. Don't pick up jellyfish. That part. Don't go surf. Just stay out the water. Just, just stay on the shore and enjoy put your toes you ain't, you ain't gonna catch me out there anyways um released a series of of text messages um and dms uh over the course of her relationship with john which i don't think lasted very long maybe a year year and a half or whatever and then he Is moved on not really i don't think the way these kids be doing. uh and then he he moved on to the mother of his newborn, their newborn, He's a kid? relatively newborn child. Um, now, so got the the most popular, the most popular one, the one that you see if you search it is, you know, him kind of explaining his uh, his boundaries, mm-hmm. right? Where he says like, and I'll put this, I'll put this up, plain and simple. If you need surfing with men boundary less inappropriate friendships with men to model to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit to post sexual pictures friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful i am not the right partner for you if these things bring you to a place of happiness i support it and there will be no hard feelings these are my boundaries for a romantic partnership my boundaries with you on the way these actions have hurt our trust. Um, so that was the first one I saw. Mm-hmm. And then there's some, there's some other ones. Um, some 
really uh they the the message has put me in a state of mind of like okay this relationship clearly wasn't healthy mm-hmm. like it doesn't seem like it was a very healthy relationship where people felt where each person felt uh, respected mm-hmm. at least their feelings or their preferences what each other would want to do it seemed like they were at odds clearly um, Sarah that's her name right Sarah Brady wanted to uh, she was a surf instructor like, I don't know how you expect a surf instructor not to take pictures you know in a surf suit or swimsuit with you know if you're in, if you're training men there's gonna be men there who you, you gotta take pictures like I, I don't really understand how you mean that but nonetheless those are his boundaries and clearly that's part of what she was doing or wanted to do so it it, it just struck me as like a very toxic relationship mm-hmm. one because of some of the messages that he was sending clearly he uh had some hurt and felt hurt and disrespected and that his boundaries weren't being respected and you know she according to some of the things he said she tried to abide by some of the requests that he made because she felt like you know things would get better but your relationship's been gone almost been over almost two years and now these things come out it doesn't really it you know what i would prefer to have never known about this I would, I would, I would prefer to have never known about Jonah Hill's relationship boundaries. I would love to have never known who Sarah Brady is. God bless her. I would prefer to know none of this. I don't, I think we're at a place now where we don't always need to just drop the DMs. Mm-hmm. Drop the screenshots. Like, it, why? I I don't I I don't I don't like. Uh, like why? I don't see the point in it. And honestly, you know, granted, we're only seeing like like snippets of what their relationship was like, and then snippets, you know. <laughs> they, they don't make it seem they don't make it seem like it was a very um healthy relationship but based on like the one i just read i don't see a whole lot wrong with a person stating their what is comfortable for them in a relationship and i'm assuming based on how how he phrased it that this wasn't his first time saying these things make me uncomfortable. These are my um, uh, uh, non negotiable. Thank you. Non negotiables. But at the end, he, and I don't know if it was this message or another message, he says, but if this is what you want to do, then, you know, then that's probably going to be the end of this. And I wish you the best of luck because these are my non negotiables. This is my line in the sand. I don't know that there's really anything wrong with that. Now, you can discuss i mean you could take exception with like dude she's a surf instructor like what do you mean you don't want her surfing with dudes fine but everybody's allowed to have their boundaries Mm -hmm. and you know it's up to each person to decide if they can make their relationship work in spite of those those boundaries so this i just you know, I mean, and there has been a lot of talk about him being, um, what's the word? Questionable. <laughs> no, uh, abusive, abusive language or, or mentally, um, so uh, mentally abusive, or, um, trying, like trying to control her and things like that. And I got to tell you from these messages, I, just, I didn't get that. Um, what I got was, uh, someone who is expressing themselves this is what I want from my partner in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe not the most self-aware individual, but still nonetheless, just stating what they prefer. I mean, we, we look at timelines 
all day long on social media and people are saying, oh, if you don't make this much, you know, don't, you know, I don't want to date you. Or if you can't afford this much on a first date, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm not really interested in you, not the person for me. Completely, you will remember your first date. I remember ours. In the grand scheme of things, other than the first impression, I mean, it's it's one in hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of memories. And if you're not willing <laughs> to get to that next memory just because the first date is not $200 or someone doesn't pick you up for the first date and prefers to meet you somewhere, you know, you, you risk missing out on a lot. Um, and you may also dodge some bullets. You know, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but people are allowed to have their preferences, mm-hmm. uh, the things that they would prefer, the things that they would not prefer. And they're allowed to stand on those things, 10 toes down. So I didn't really get where a lot of people were kind of coming for him because he was doing that. There's a, there's a way in which you do it, but I didn't think it was like overtly abusive, the language. Um, I've seen, (laughs) I've seen much worse language, um, we've exchanged much, much worse language than, than what I, what I read back when we were dating. So I don't know. I I don't see the, I don't see the benefit in releasing it. Um, um, I, I I just don't, I don't know that it was to me, it wasn't necessary. I don't know this woman. I don't know where she's at, what she was trying to accomplish. Um, but some things I feel like are just better left as they are. Mm-hmm. So that was my take on it. Yeah. So I had a different take on it, and it's probably because I'm a woman um, and I've dealt with a variety of types of men. Um, I do. So this gave this for initially this gave like the foundation of a Johnny Heard, Amber Depp, Johnny Depp, Amber Heard. Um, Like if they had continued, they would have been defecating on people's pillows and stuff like that. Um, He gives controlling. Um, He also gives insecure. Uh, And I this is with my Google psychotherapy degree so um i'll show you the diploma later but that's really just my way of saying i'm not qualified to say everything anything that i'm about to say um noted (laughs) but so he gives insecure he gives controlling um he gives fearful and i attribute that to someone who has lost weight and being someone who has lost weight who, throughout my life, I've, I've yo-yoed um, in my size. And you you do have a natural, a def- he probably has other insecurities. I mean, he's an actor who was pigeonholed into certain type of roles for a while um, and then kind of changed his image and didn't really kind of go the Adele route. Like I feel like Adele lost a bunch of weight and was just like, I'm Adele and I'm everything. And we were like, hey. And it was just like, he's Jonah Hill. And now he's skinny. Um, Digressing. Uh, He definitely gives off insecure. That's like the number one thing I get from all of these. His misuse of the word boundaries concerns me. I was in misuse. I think people... Boundaries are so tricky because yes, you need to have boundaries. You need to establish boundaries, but it's not, I don't personally think it's okay to go out of your way to find someone attractive, start the groundwork for a relationship, and then essentially tell them that their way of living doesn't align with your boundaries. I think that's, that is, that's selfish. It, she's because all her ca- most of her cards again we are not in this relation we're not in this relationship didn't know the details um i just saw a picture of jonah hill on instagram and realized he was the dude in um wolf of wall street i was like oh it was that guy um but there's another actor in hollywood who resembles him 
he's kind of got a doppelganger the guy from the hangover they're like they they look like nephew cousins continue um, your point please oh where was i what did i say bring it back bring it back bring it back bring it back were you not listening i was you weren't because you can't help but this no this 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 lets you know how empty your point is that you're trying to make no, that you can't so remember he, de- he definitely gives me like i'm insecure but i think it's very selfish when someone has put their their cards on their table and and you know this is who they are you know she's a surf instructor it's not like she was a librarian and then you started dating and she's like i'm going to pursue being a surf instructor question is it selfish because they weren't married or is it just selfish period it's selfish period so let me ask you something because i want i I really want to understand if this is if this is true or if this is circumstantial because it's absolutely circumstantial (laughs) so it's not it's not absolute it's just circumstantial i don't know what your question is but i feel like my answer is okay because when we get married when we when we started dating and then got married what commitments did i have who was i responsible for you and who else your dog my dog bert mm-hmm. right old bertus um and you knew oh, mm, you're gonna do that and you knew <sighs> and you knew going into mm-hmm. our marriage that the dog was mine and even though it was not living with me at the time in which we were dating and engaged that once we settled and had a house that the dog was to come live with its owner its master me right you knew that mm-hmm. you knew that going into it right did i <laughs> i know what you hoped that was such a long time ago <laughs> but i know what i i know it was discussed that the dog would come live with me because what? he was because he was mine we were living in the city at the time there was uh we didn't want to pay the pen, pet rent or whatever whatever for my apartment for your apartment that i was living with you absolutely i was bumming and when we bought a house we had space for the dog. The dog was supposed to come live with us, which it did. Now, um, it got to a point where you realized that it was not beneficial for everyone living here that the dog still be here, mm-hmm. right? And we had we basically had to make a decision for the best of the family, our family. Mm-hmm. And I and I and this isn't me trying to like make you look like a horrible human. Mm-hmm. I will always 100% as hard as it is do what's best for you and our family first, but the dog had to go. And luckily he was able to go back to my parents where he had been used to living. So is that selfish of you? Yeah. Okay. I shouldn't have fallen in love with guys who had a dog. (laughs) No. Was it selfish of you to, I never overtly said anything. I mean, the aura in the house was was not great, but I never like did said. you did you stop me? I don't know that I even had the opportunity. I feel like I just came home or okay. back from a trip. So what we're not going to do is what we're trying to do. This was eight, nine years ago. This is not. I, I, well, I, luckily, I remember the one few things oh, that I do remember. This is, when your memory this is one that I remember very well. So Boy, the, the time I'm the bad guy. <laughs> that's when his memory works. Okay. I'm just saying, and you're not the bad guy, right? This is your this is your home. If you can't feel comfortable here, then it's it's not that's not good i see right? where you're coming and i from. and i understand and i understand that right it doesn't mean it wasn't that doesn't mean it wasn't hard that doesn't mean it probably wasn't one of the most difficult decisions i've ever had to make but i'd make it a hundred times over 100 mm-hmm. percent. i appreciate you for that so but i wanted to use that because that's very real right mm-hmm. that hits for you and me mm-hmm. right um for different reasons but your premise that kind of falls into it and if you're to say it's selfish to know that you're dating this person and then all of a sudden when you realize that hey what they do one of the things that they engage in doesn't work for me, doesn't work for me that it's selfish to say hey i'm into you you're into me i want this to work but it can't work if you're engaged in this you're saying that's selfish you've done the same thing mm-hmm. so if you admit that that's selfish, then that's fine. I just wanted to know. It's yeah, it literally, I, it's literally a question. I admit that it's selfish. Okay. Um, I won't. I won't say it's not that it is selfish, because 
your judgment is clouded because of whether it be lust, emotional, whatever. Um, so I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stand by that. I do recognize that that's selfish, and it happens in so many degrees. You know, you mm-hmm. are a single person and you fall in love with someone who has kids, and you know, you or a kid, and now you have to deal with the the parent the other parent of that child and you know maybe you want this person's full attention and they have this person that they've brought into the world so they are you know dedicated to them there are so many degrees for which this scenario applies if you twist the 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 features of it so i think human nature we're selfish we are everybody's selfish you're always looking out for yourself so i won't deny that and i think in the moment when you're in that early phase of a relationship and you recognize that thing are, things are getting serious, I, I feel like a lot of us just want to live in a place of bliss where it's just going to work out. You know, we're just happy-go-lucky and things are going to work out the way they're supposed to work out and I don't have to worry about that or I'll worry about that when it comes. And that's the problem. And that's why a lot of people, not making this a marriage segment, but it, it's turning into one, um, that's why a lot of people are... are you see post on Facebook where it's like, have these converse, these topic conversations before you get married. Talk, like, And one of them, this is the first time I had even said it, seen it, it was like, talk about money. Talk about what you want your credit score to be. Talk about how you want to raise your kids. What denomination? Talk about, you know, your sex life, your sex expectations. Talk Like, there are so many specific things that, yeah, we can have a conversation we should later. Talk, we should talk about ours. We should. Yeah. She had told me you were such a... <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing. You, but you knew this. I was just playing. You're right. This it is didn't. not. See, you're creating a boundary. It wasn't. You're creating a, bo- a boundary where there there's no border. You can't put I a should, border. I should have created boundaries. So we're <laughs> I, need safe, I need a safe space <laughs> from Jessica. Sometimes <laughs> she like get in here. <laughs> she was grabbing me by my ankles, slinging me around. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, y'all. I gotta, I gotta digress. So apparently, I there was. A, what should I say? <laughs> what? The fl- oh no! You be violating me, man. Okay, I won't get it. That's it. Uh, that's that's abuse. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> that's that's harassment. What you do to me? But um, there's so the, you can't. We're selfish, and because we're in the moment, and and I think what Jonah did, I don't know any, every other conversation he had. It seems like he said something up front based off of what you read and what you infer as well. He said something early on in the relationship, well, I mean, and then later we don't, on he was reiterating it. We don't know. We don't because we're not in it. So it, it may have been early on. It may not have been. Ultimately, it doesn't. I don't think it matters because. In a relate that the beauty, like you say it all the time, the beauty of a relationship is that ultimately there's really no strings attached, unless you have like kids or something, mm-hmm. or you go into like debt on something where you're you know both deed holders. Um, so like, she's under no absolutely no obligation if he doesn't want her to to be uh, a surf instructor. No obligation. You're right. She's like, nah, bro, I'm good. Nice knowing you. Um. I know it's not always that simple, right? Because I know sometimes if there if there is um, matters of the heart, are never that. Yeah, simple. and I know if there is some like I know there's abuse, and and you know like God forbid if he ever was like physically abusive toward her, she may have felt like you know she couldn't just like just walk away because it's Jonah Hill. I mean, it's Hollywood, and it can B, mess up her business. B plus is A minus list actor. I think he's in the C's. No, I, no, Jonah Hill is absolutely a, 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 a in the. Why B can't to I remember anything he's in? B to A range actor, absolutely. See, he's always in like that slapstick comedy stuff, and that's just not my. Uh, number one, he was in Moneyball, and he was in Wolf of Wall Street. Didn't see Moneyball, and I just realized he was the guy in Wolf of Wall Street. He's and like, I just remember Matthew McConaughey in the. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fantastic actor. He probably actually. is. He wasn't in in um. The Vegas one with the Mike Tyson tattoo. Oh. Is that Galif- Galifian? I see. That's, I, I, those are the people I mix him up with. Um, so fat white dudes. All look alike to you. Got it. Full figured. Uh, so <laughs> full figured. All right. Um, but yeah, could have could have walked away. So this, like. I don't know, man. This is a greater conversation. It's not it. it take away Jonah and Sarah. I mean, it, you do have to wonder why. 
and that people are saying that's victim blaming why she's choosing now to share this. I don't, I, I don't, don't think it's victim, but I think it's a fair question. And one, are we sure that she's even a victim? Cause we only re- really ever see one side of this. We see the, his, in a conversation, the bulk of the communication is coming from him. Mm-hmm. Her responses are, 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 are scarce, if not non-existent. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say um, she isn't innocent, but I don't know that we can necessarily say that she is. When you're the one releasing the screenshots, you know, you have all the power because you get to choose what people see and what they don't. Probably maybe even most importantly, what mm-hmm. they don't. You so I don't know. I don't stuff. I don't know that it's it's victim blaming. I mean, you can she's definitely uh, positioned herself as one. Um, and the, 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 the screenshots that were released make it very easy for people to, to fall right into that line of thinking. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, me looking at it objectively, I, I can see like, oh, he probably wasn't (laughs) the easiest person to date, Oh no! but I don't, I don't, I, I see insecurity. I see, um, fear, uh, probably some fear but i i see i see some vulnerability you know saying hey it bothers me when i see you do this transparency when i see you with with these people it's it's vulnerable and that's not easy for especially men uh to to do even in a text to the person that they're with so i see a lot of that but i don't i don't know that i don't know that any either one of them is more of a victim than the other Mm mm-hmm and I say that because I don't like not being able to see all of a conversation. Yeah. You see one, you see one specific part of each of each screenshot is like one very specific part of their conversation. And it's just, I, it always makes me. Cause we're all wary. getting one small. Yeah. It makes me wary. It makes me wary. So I think they're both toxic. Oh yeah, Absolutely. Um, and when you put two toxic people together, I think most of us are toxic. Um, most of who? Most of us in the world. You I think speak we've for all been through stuff. I'm not toxic. We, you are, oh, my friend, you are radioactive. You are Chernobyl. You're right. I'm okay, pure. you're not Chernobyl. You're like the town next to Chernobyl. I'm pure. Toxicity. <laughs> um, we're all toxic. So, speaking of, are you done? I guess so. No, Talks I'm sorry. Mr. Talks. I, I was just looking at the clock in about 15 minutes. Speaking of uh, marriage, since we want to be relationship themed um, on this season of Rush Vibes, did you see the video that Canel put that she sent to us and was I like, did see the video. we should, that we should talk about it on the next episode. I don't like how this thing just has a mind of its own now. Um, so I haven't watched it. So we're going to watch it. We're going to react to it. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to speak about it for the next. I feel like you pulled a Jonah Hill by cutting me off. What do you mean? Creating a boundary. Are you done? While <laughs> I was a in the middle of a statement. It, it, it makes me uncomfortable when I you talk. don't, you don't wrap up your thoughts. All right. So here's the, here's the video. Everyone says marriage should be 50, 50. It's the biggest crock of bullshit I've ever heard. It's never 50, 50. Yeah. Ever. And so what we do is we quantify where we are. So if Steve comes home and he'll be like, I got 20. Just in terms of energy. Just energy, investment, kindness, patience. I'm at a 20. And I'll be like, I'll cover you. I got you, brother. Like, I'll pull the 80. Sometimes we come home, which we have done a lot. My mom has been sick. And I'll say, I've got 10. And Steve, like two days ago, said, I'm riding a solid 25. So we know that we have to sit down at the table anytime we have less than 100 combined and figure out a plan of kindness toward each other. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because the thing is, marriage is not something that's 50-50. A partnership works when you can carry their 20 or they can carry your 20. And that when you both just have 20, you have a plan where you don't hurt each other. Thoughts. Speak. I agree with portions of it. Hmm. What do you disagree with? I don't know one that you that anyone has the capacity to measure how much they have and be like, oh, we don't have a hundred. Let's sit at the table and figure this out. Um, hmm. 
I don't, I, that's not realistic to me. I'm not Brene Brown. Um, like she's a professional. She's goat status in terms of how she processes sure. um, stuff. She does TED Talks and stuff. So that's what I disagreed with. And social, I, social proof. It's nice. I do agree with the fact that marriage is not 100%, but there are very few partnerships in not this 50, world. 50, 50, excuse me. There are very few partnerships in this world that are 50, 50. Um, someone's always at one point or another doing more. That's just, that's just how it is. Um, and the conflict comes when both of you are depleted at the same time. Mm. I see it with us. Like there are moments where I'm depleted and I look over at you expecting that you're going to have my assist and like you're laying on the couch on your phone. And I'm like, bruh, about these three kids that I don't have the energy to deal with. And you're like, or you nap, you fall in the sleep. And I'm like, man, I wanted to fall asleep. So. Or you fall in the sleep. And mm -hmm. I think the same thing. Yeah, but I can't. It's, 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 it's fair to use I, um, counter examples. I carried and nourished your seeds. This means absolutely to, to, with respect to what exactly we're speaking about right now that make that has absolutely no bearing. I think it's relevant. So, um, no, it's not. My feelings are valid. But that's, that doesn't mean that they make that's sense. A toxic boundary. It my does. feelings are valid. <laughs> my, my feelings are valid on the point. Um, so yeah, she's a hundred percent on the point with that. Marriage is not 50, 50. Uh, someone is going to be doing more, bringing more. I, we've, I've witnessed this in our very own marriage. There's been seasons where you were, you were going, you know, balls to the wall with work and I was holding it down at the time. We only had one kid. Uh, so we had one kid and I was pregnant a transition to that season. But, um, I got, it. I was like, this is David's season. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, put in 75%, let him do, you know, 25% here and let him do his travel and, you know, grow. And with that 25%, I still got knocked up. So, um, 25% goes pretty far. Anywho. Making a fascinating, doing a fascinating job about making this segment about you. It's doing a really good job. I'm using myself as an example because I'm not in Brene Brown's marriage. I didn't even know she was married. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make while being disrespected is, just a little bit of sass. is that it's not 50-50. Most partnerships are not 50-50. Someone has to, at, at any given time, someone's giving more. Why do you think that that idea of marriage persists then? That marriage is 50-50? Because mm -hmm. people want to hear lies we live in a society that prefers lies than truth and then people get into situations based off of the lies that they've seen and heard and they're like why did no one tell me about this like i feel marriage is the number one thing people do not talk enough about the actual reality and then when people talk about the reality it's still a diluted reality like I, I try to be really serious to people who are like, I want to be married. I want to have kids. I'm like, enjoy being single. Cause once you start accumulating these people, you're stuck with them for life. They're not going anywhere. But I think 50, 50, it, it just, because partnership, you assume that everyone's going to bring their half marriage is def, def, essentially defined culturally as like, Oh, you know, this is my better half, you know, Two halves make a whole when and now recently in the last decade or 20 years, it's been like, OK, you need to be whole and you need to marry someone who's whole. And then together you make another whole. So we have we've put it in our we've programmed ourselves to believe that these very important structures in our lives that we strive for require 50 percent of work from us and 50% of work from the person that we are committing to when that's not the case. It requires 100, and I think that's part of why I disagree with her. I don't think that I can expect you to, to I can end a work day and be like, hey, I only have 80. And if you say, you, well, I only have 50, what, what's our conversation of getting the rest? We still have three kids who are screaming, who are going to drive us mad, who are going to test our patience. We're both still tired. We both know that we have to go to sleep, wake up and do the same thing over tomorrow. We both know that unless 
we have a sleepover planned with the with grandparents we still have these kids on the weekend so the relief isn't there to recharge so i don't know i just don't like the concept of this meter i don't even think it needs to be 100 percent. i think it just needs to be i'm not and i i think i've done that whenever i've gone through bats with like depression or just feeling like i'm not 100 percent. i've recently learned to come to you and be like i'm not there and i think you've learned to figure out what that means and i can't put a percentage number on it i can just let you know that i don't have it that's what i say i don't have it and I've texted it to you and I just expect you to understand like I'm going to be off. I might be moody. I might be rude. I might be emotional. I might be reserved, but I'm giving you fair warning. But this whole measure of we have a scale of 100 and this 50 is mine and this 50 is yours. And we need to make sure that together our numbers that we're contributing is equaling 100. I don't think that's realistic. So do you think that maybe the 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 numbers were, were were metaphorical and not literal. So I, I don't know that, and maybe they do, maybe that's their system, right? Like, whereas you say, I don't have it. Maybe she's like, I only got 25. Like, there's not that much, if it's an understood system, mm -hmm. like I've had to learn what it means when you say, I don't have it, because this is extremely broad in general. Um, maybe they've learned to say, okay, yo, I only got 25. Like, and her partner or spouse knows what that means. So I I, th I don't get so caught up in the numbers as I do um, what it signifies, what it triggers, right? Which is why I think it's really important. So as an example, I see parallels in what she said and what has transpired even within the last week with you and me, just small examples when I was down here on the couch <laughs> last week on my phone, you asked me to come up and sit with the girls because they hadn't fallen asleep yet so that you could do what you needed to do because you had reached a point in which you realized this was gonna take longer than probably what you had to, to give to what it took to get the girls to sleep. So you asked me to come tag you, to come tag you out. I came up the other night. It, Went up with Sonoma to bed at 7.30, it's 9.30. I'm still up there with her and she's still like, yeah, what are we doing? Like, what's the next move, dad? And I said, Jess, can you come get this girl? Because I have nothing left for her. I can put the other one, I can put the other two to bed easy. She just need to get them still. But this one, this is new and you came up. So... Um, I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I wouldn't focus too much on the fact that she used a numerical system mm -hmm. other than the fact that they have a system, which is what I think is really important for most couples to have that system, to establish it and understand it, uh, to put it in place and to work at it. Cause it's not always going to be perfect. You gotta, you have to try to utilize it a few times and not always going to, it's not always going to work. I didn't always understand what it meant when you said I don't have it. Initially, I would try to fix it. It's just my thing. If it, when it comes to you, I got to fix stuff if it's not right. Uh, and I've had to learn recently that I can't always do that. And that doesn't make me any less of a husband, doesn't make me any less of a man. It just means that this is life and I can't fix all of your problems. I can absolutely support you through them. And depending on the situation, I got to support you differently. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our system. So, yeah, I, I would agree. Absolutely. Marriage isn't 50 50. Um, and I, and I'm, <laughs> I used to think that it was before I knew what it was, before I knew what marriage was. I used to always just, oh, it's 50 50. Like, two people come together and they, they form a couple, like literally 50 50. One and one make two. Like, it just makes sense. 50, 50. So why not everything just be 50, 50? Um, and then you, you get older and you learn about life and you realize it's not that, it's not that black and white. It's not that simple. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I appreciate messages like this going viral because, um, you talk a lot about expectations with young women. Um, no, I don't know that I necessarily agree with don't get married yet. Live your life. Um, because you can live, you can live your life while you're, while you're married you can. and you're in, in use 
speak from the vantage point and perspective of someone who had ambitions when they got married and those were quickly crushed because not crushed, but quickly altered Mm -hmm. um, and lowered because we had solace relative like a year after we got married. So I think that that's a bit of projection and your, and your, 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 your advice is, is I think slanted because of it, because you always reference yourself Mm -hmm. when you're, when you're saying why. Um, so I, 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 I get what you're, what you're, what you're doing is, is good. I think, um, because people are naive and you don't know what something is like until you're in it. Mm -hmm. And you can't ever know about what marriage is like until you're in it. So it's, it's great for married people to let people, let single people know that it's not all, it's not all rainbows and sunshine and roses. Absolutely. Um, but I think it's also important to know that there are other marriages that are unlike yours and in other marriages, people have gotten married young and still done all the the wild and crazy things that they wanted to do when they were single. They got to travel, they got to go skinny dipping, they got to do whatever um, while they were married. There are people who travel, their lives are set up so that they can travel with young kids, even if they get have kids right after they get married. And it doesn't really, it doesn't taint or, or dampen their life experience because they're still getting to do everything that they wanted to do. It's just now they're doing it with their family. So that's my perspective. I don't, I just feel like, if we're going to say, you know, live your life, um, I, I just feel like we should also acknowledge that it's possible to do those things that you're mentioning when you say live your life, be young, be travel, be whatever. You can do that married as well. Mm-hmm. So, but that's just, this is my perspective. And, um, but I think it's, it, it, I like that video because it does give uh, some insight to young people um, that, you know, a lot of what you hear about marriage is bullshit. Like it's not 50, 50. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. And it's not all head over heels in love. Uh, it's work. Some might even call it difficult. <laughs> Y'all need to go back to season one. Um, but it's worth it. I, not a thing I would do differently. So I, I appreciated the video now that I've watched it. <laughs> I, I appreciate the video I appreciate too. It. I want to expound on um, the advice that you say that I give, because yes, it is it is slated from my perspective. That was my mic. Um, but the key thing that I try to hone in on, we have a society that puts so much pressure specifically on one, on women, on young women that there's a certain age you should be married by, that you should have children by, as well as having a career and bringing in money and all of these Is things. It? Yes. Oh. I mean, this is a genuine question. I, yeah, there are just mm-hmm. some expectations that are on women. That That's just how society is designed. This so, is like, like pardon? parents or... I mean, you get it from your parents, you get it from aunts uncles just culture tv shows where you know a successful woman has a husband she has kids and then she also has a job um that she loves not all of that is not realistic what i is realistic excuse me i take that back it is realistic but it can take work to accumulate what i focus on by telling people not to rush into marriage and not to make that be that their primary focus is specifically for young women who are like who want it desperately because that's what they see because that's what they know because that's what's been ingrained in them since they were little girls and they've been given baby dolls and told to be mothers i try to emphasize that being single is a season and whether you're single from you know i'll say age 20 and you don't get married till you're 35 Yes, that's 15 years that you've watched your friends, your cousins, your neighbors, your coworkers get engaged, get married and have the babies. That's still a season in comparison to if you get married at 35 and you are prayerfully married to that same person for the rest of your life. That 15 years of singleness is nothing in comparison to your hopefully 50 years of marriage to your 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 
your soulmate, your your life partner. So I try to emphasize that, yes, you're single now. And yes, the pressures of the world and culture around you is telling you that you should be in a relationship. And if you're not already married, you should be on the route to marriage and, you know, planning kids and own a house and all of these things. Yes, you have that pressure on you. But enjoy this season no matter how long or short as much as possible because as a woman who is married as a woman who's married with children i carry all of these titles i know what it is like i wouldn't change any aspect of my life i'm very happy with my life i love being a wife I love being a mother. I think I've really come into the person I am because I am a wife and a mother. But there are women who are depressed, who feel like they're failing because they aren't where I am. And I'm just trying to encourage them that enjoy this season of singleness. Because if you as a single woman say, I want to get up and go to Barbados. As long as you can get the PTO and you can afford it, you can get up and go to Barbados. If I want to go to Barbados, I need to come to you. I need to have a conversation with you. When am I trying to go to Barbados? Are the kids in school? Are the kids out? Are What's your work schedule going to look like? Will you have the support while I'm in Barbados to go? Are you okay with me going to Barbados? Who am I going to Barbados with? It wouldn't be, the, it, it wouldn't be all that. No, it wouldn't be though. There are so no, many right. factors that I have to take into consideration before I do anything. And there are factors that you have to take into consideration before you do things. Even if it's something as simple as going out for the night. Do you have the capacity to handle the three kids so that I can go out? Vice versa. Do I like, do you I just have be the like, capacity? yo, I'm going out. No, you Deal not. with it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so these are considerations that we have to take. We always I need mean, to. I'm not done. We always need to think of the other person. We need to have our partner in mind when we make any decision for our lives. If you take a new job, you need to consider how is this job going to affect the structure of my household? How am I going to be available for pickups, for drop offs, for recitals, for um, school plays? These are things we have to factor. When you're a single person, if there's a new job, I can pick it up. If I have to move across the country, okay, I'll pack up and go. Every decision you make once you commit your life to someone's, you need to factor those people into every decision. So that's why I like to encourage single people that, yes, you're, you're single now. You want to be married. And I love that you've been hopefully exposed to great marriages and great examples of the good examples of the greatness of marriage that you're like, I want that. But in this moment, appreciate that you don't have to factor th all of those things right now. That in the next season, yes, you will have to factor and take those things into consideration. But right now is a season you can never get back. So enjoy it. You could so, also die before you get a chance to be married. You that could. could be a season you never get to experience. But you'll be dead. <laughs> You be living your best death. You living your best dead life. So you you don't even know you missed it. Mm -hmm. So that that so that I just wanted to expand on that because I felt like you were you were missing that key point. Yes, no, nah, I, I wasn't. I come from my perspective, and yes, I would have loved to be maybe be single a little bit longer. But I say that only because the me I am now knows things that I would have liked the me back then to know. But I wouldn't know those things if I wasn't the me I am now. So it's kind of a non-starter. Like if I was single just back in 2000, when did we break up? Four, 13, 14? Which time? We'll say 13, 14. I don't know the things I know now. So it's life experience that's taught me this, which is why I'm teaching it to other people. But... I wouldn't change a thing. I love the me I am. I love, you know, the first time I traveled internationally was with a one-year-old. Mm -hmm. A one-year-old. Imagine that. I went to two different continents with a with a toddler, yeah, chasing and, her and, in, the, in, in the Munich airport. And you were like, yo, I got to go to Ghana. And I was like, cool. And I'm taking the kid. And I was like, do it. And I'm coming. I might come back. I was like, see you if you get here. Yeah. So, yeah, so many, so many, so many decisions you had to make and so much that you had to consider. Well, I didn't have a job. 
at the time I didn't have a job. I had just been this laid is, off from my job. This is true. I forgot. And, and so I was like, cool. Uh, I ain't got the time. And we only had one kid. Yeah. But even that's a factor. We had one kid. The things you can do with just one kid is so different. Like we went to a wedding in Mexico with one kid. She almost didn't make it back. She di almost didn't, but that's another episode. Imagine if someone invites us to a wedding in Mexico and we got three of these little people. That's it's a good so thing Sal's been, been playing her Duolingo in front of the, in front of the other two. <laughs> um, so they are already like, cultured. There are just so many in, in the different seasons of life. There are so many factors. So that's why I encourage that. I do. You're right. I mean, I get I get what you what you're saying, obviously. Right. Like and that applies light, to like ex too. experience is the greatest is the greatest teacher. And you can't like you can't skip when it comes to knowledge, right? Like there are certain things you just have to go through mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. now I get it. And you're always going to be naive as a single person who thinks they know what marriage is going to be like. There's just too many variables. You can never know. You can see examples in other people mm -hmm. and be like, I want my marriage to look like that. And maybe you can craft your marriage to resemble something like that, but you can never... You never know what it's going to be it's like, true. and you never know what you're going to have to sacrifice and what compromises you're going to have to make. But you will have to sacrifice, and you will have to compromise. And, you, and those are the only guarantees. Um, I do feel so, that men don't have enough conversations about like enjoying being single, and not just because society has sexualized men more, but just in general of like the weight of being the head of the household and the well, one, it's not always this, it's not always. I guarantee that the man will be the head of the household. Some people, some people share that, that load. Um, some women lead households. Um, Look, and, and then, and then yes, for almost a decade, as soon as I got married, when I tell y'all, I could not pay our mortgage. If something happened to David, I gave all that responsibility to him. How many bills are in my name? The electricity and the water in my name. I can't pay those things. Cause I made sure that he is the head of the household. So, I'm capable. Not every relationship, every heterosexual relationship, the man is necessarily the head of the household. Um, I don't know whether men have enough conversations about what it's like to be married or not. Um, I know I don't have a whole lot, but most of the men I hang around are married. So we don't have a lot of opportunity to talk to single men. I haven't been in those environments where I can impart wisdom into single people. I mean, we had... we hey, young man. <laughs> you know, come here. Your, your, your young blood. Young blood. That's what young blood. Say. Um, you know, we sat on the married panel, and but that would, that would probably be it. Uh, so when I tell y'all, he was so smooth on that panel. He was just like, was it? Y'all, it's work. Yeah. Oh, thanks, I was babe. like, thanks, babe. I married that man. Appreciate it. And he had a nice fit. He had just gone out and got himself a nice fresh fit. I had to it's fit like, the part. I was like, I figured okay. I couldn't go out there and jogger and hoodie. I'm glad you did. Uh, well, I should have done it. I can't moments. wait. I can't wait for Bethany to say something about my hoodie. This, this we, get, we have moments where I'm like, okay. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, anyone who asks me, you know, I'll gladly tell them what it's like being married, uh, what it was like being married early on and what it's like now. But um, man, I don't know. Maybe men do need to have more conversations. I, so. I mean, I know we have a high divorce rate in the country, but I think that's because people expect things to be easy in a first sign of hard work or compromise or struggle. They cut and run. And, you know, one thing we've don't always see eye to eye with, uh, our, our probably our most core principles or things that, that we want but one thing we've always been, you know, in line with is that this wasn't something that we, you know, it, we weren't looking to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. Like we're not in this to oh, see how it goes, test the waters. Yeah. And then like, nah, um, someone's got to die. And even though from time to time when we have our rough patches, Jessica starts looking at apartments and condos for her to live in. Um, Actually, I look at apartments for us to share, and then we swap. And yeah, the kids, whatever. The kids stay, meaning that we won't be we won't be together because she exaggerates <laughs> because about I everything. Because I want to keep stability for the kids, um, I look at apart. I will look at an apartment 
and we so, will share it. And on your week, you stay in the house with the kids, and then I will stay in the apartment, and vice versa. This chick literally told me we had a we had a bit of a of a of a period, very dry period. It was bad in a number number of ways. Uh, what was it last year? <laughs> And uh, we got through it. Um, she was like, yeah, I was looking at condos. She's like, <laughs> I was like, chick, what? Um, but that's a reality that people don't talk about. I mean, people talk about it, but they don't really talk about it. I've never looked at condos when we have arguments. I just figure it will be, we'll be fine in the morning. There's a part of me that knows, it, but this was an extended an extended just rift so i was like if this ain't gonna work we at least got to keep the house stable for the kids so let me go find us an apartment well i think a lot of it and we'll i'll say this and then we'll, we maybe table it for next week but a lot of it had to do with the fact that oh lord jesus it's a fire God, is she on your shirt? Hmm? i said is she on your shirt no <laughs> this is this loud rumbling noise that just came over our house thunder, so i remember the meteorologist saying oh, that's the thunder it doesn't sound like thunder, thunder. any thunder i've heard uh, a lot of the reason why um i was so distant towards you in that time was because you were very um very short with me and very uh even i mean you've always been highly critical of me but even more so in very harsh in, standard and very very unfairly so and so it affected my um, morale. No, it affected how attracted I was to you. And I remember telling you, like, "Yo, I'm not really attracted to you right now." Yeah. But I was like, "If you had somebody who did this to you and did this to you and said this to you and said you weren't doing this, like, would you be attracted to them?" So, no, nah, I'm not. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's gonna be dry because I'm not really feeling you right now because you're not feeling me. So, mm -hmm. what are we gonna do about it? So. Just wanted y'all to know it was really Jessica's fault. Yes. He <laughs> but, was playing his role too. But uh, maybe we'll talk about that next week. So uh, we're at you, hour. You lucky I can't remember. We're what at I hour. Were told. We're at hour twenty two minutes. So we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna do a better job of plugging the podcast while we're recording the podcast. So don't forget that you can check us out on Apple Music and Spotify, as well as watch us on YouTube. Where hopefully you're watching this and you're thinking about subscribing. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you know when we drop new episodes. Looks like they're going to be on Fridays. You know, we're a little random, so you might catch one on a Wednesday. Maybe even a Monday, because not a lot of pods drop on Mondays. At least ones that, that we follow. Oh, yeah. That's so, true. Uh, be sure to like, record Friday share, subscribe, hit the comments, let us know what you think. If you're married, how you feel about the th the myth that marriage is 50-50. Um, how you've learned what your system is in your marriage for when one of your part for when your spouse or partner doesn't have it, how you compensate, how you fill in for them. What do you all do? Love to hear it. would love to know what works for, for other people. So let us know. Anything? No. Cause if I start talking, I'm gonna start talking. Yeah. So we out. That's rush vibes for this week. See y'all next week. And maybe even nah. No, I'm not going to say nothing. I was going to say maybe even I see guess. a new, but no. Maybe. Maybe a new set, much smaller, but we got some changes. more more intimate, Ooh, more quaint. That's that's what they say when it Reset, got small. a dim, dim lighting and recess, you know, it's maybe, but maybe not. Switch up. So, uh, but you got to the next week to find out. So, we'll see you there. We out. Peace. Going through some going past. Yeah, none but some growing pains. Yeah, hey, hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Yeah.